All right, well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the stream. So today we're gonna be trying something a little different. Um, I am trying to learn ZBrush, as you can see. Um, hold on one sec. All right, looks better. Uh, I realized that the uh, the logo was in the way. Anyway, sorry for the delay. All right, so I am not super comfortable with ZBrush yet, um, but we're gonna try something. Uh, I'm just gonna do an exercise that I learned um, in a brief course that I did. Uh, this is, it was actually a course designed for making like D&D miniatures and stuff. Um, and I'm kind of trying to apply this to jewelry, so I'm definitely going to go further and look for more courses, I think, uh, to learn more of the ins and outs and what tools and see if there's any custom tools that I can add to ZBrush. Um, but anyway, we'll get started here. So I'm going to be making, uh, it's called a flail, which is just like a medieval weapon sort of thing on a chain. And uh, yeah, so we'll just be probably working mostly with the uh, there's a lot of terminology in ZBrush that I don't remember unfortunately um, I think they called these primitives so like a basic shape that we can just kind of stick together which is really more of a CAD way to go about it I know ZBrush isn't considered a CAD program but that's what I'm coming from um, one of the goals I have actually is to start building models um, in CAD so that they're all exactly the right size and shape and everything, importing them into ZBrush and then using ZBrush to, uh, you know, do more organic designs that are just not possible in anything else. Anyway, so I'll start with a ball and subtools, append. There we go. I need a cone. Clips a move. Approximately 90. That's one thing that I don't like so much about ZBrush is that things are very approximate. It's like, eh, it's good enough. It's, in CAD, I like, I like things to just be you know, this is 90, snap. This is 180, snap, 45s, etc. Not that there's anything super wrong with, you know, best guesses sometimes, but sometimes I just wish there's a little bit more. Yeah, make that smaller. Now, I'm not super fast at this, and I know that there's like a ton of um, different ways that we can go about making a lot of these shapes or models or whatever you want to call them, especially in ZBrush. Like in this one little course that I did, it she must have shown me like five different ways of going about any one project, and it kind of drove me a little nuts. Um, and there's like shortcuts like, oh, if you have, you have to you know hit shift and then swipe down on the left, on the right side of the screen and import it through, uh, you know, 3D print hub versus this and don't save projects, save them as a sub tool. And it's like, poof, why, why, why can't things just work? But anyway, um, yeah, so we'll keep going. 
So I wanted to duplicate this. Again, 90 approximately. And one thing I'm looking for is very specifically is that this edge hides inside the ball mesh because when we go to turn this into uh, a solid object, if those aren't touching, then it creates problems. Like um, it doesn't Boolean properly. Now, if you ask me what Boolean means, I have no idea. I just know it's a term somewhere up here, live Boolean or something. Basically meshing everything together. Okay, frame, zoom, why am I here? Rotate. Can I rotate this? <laughs> I lost my center. Oh well. I'll get it back. So let's duplicate. So by no means do I consider myself um, good at using this program. So don't use my techniques as any sort of inspiration. Um, I'm just trying to get something on this canvas. And I'm not, I'm not even working on jewelry right now. I figure I should work with more primitive stuff before I get into some of the more complex things. Um, I have tried some sculpting on some STL files that I already made. And that presents like other issues with meshing and stuff. But anyway, we'll get there. All right, so there's those four. Now I think I wanna, no, I don't wanna do that quite yet. I'll mesh them all at the very end, or I'll, I'll combine them all at the very end. Because at the moment, I think having some play would be a good idea. All right. Um, let's not get confusing. I'm picking the, this bottom one so that when I duplicate it, it just becomes another one at the bottom rather than this one, and then make it bottom over there. And that's just one of those things that bothers the crap out of me. It's very unintuitive, some of it. 45. Oh, my computer is ramping up. This will be one of the first uh, times I've streamed on this computer. We finally saved up enough and managed to get something new. Um, before we were using like a 2014 MacBook Pro and it was struggling just to run, you know, like Prusa Slicer. Uh, just, you know, just to get basic models loaded up. If I had more than a, a few in there, it was just like, it would quit. It would stutter like crazy finding the optimal um, print orientation and generating supports and stuff just took forever. So we decided it was time to retire the poor thing. And now we have a big new iMac, which I like. I think I've double duplicated that. No, oh, maybe I didn't. Oh, anyway. Um, yeah, so we now have a nice new shiny iMac. Um, I know that it's not going to last us forever, depending on how this Apple Silicon thing goes. But, uh, you know. At 
they still do for now better than a 2014 iMac or a MacBook Pro that couldn't handle the basic tasks that I need. I'm getting very picky like I don't know how big this would be if you were to print this as like a miniature but I mean a miniature by definition is tiny so we're probably talking two inches which means the overall height of the humans well, maybe this piece would be half that tops so we're talking an inch and obviously at an inch size like you just it doesn't matter as much because um, you just you can't physically see it And actually, in miniature stuff, you have to consider making things more bulky, I learned, because if you're going to 3D print it, you can't 3D print like an actual chain, you know, like links together. You have to make it something that looks kind of like a chain. Uh, and that's fine. That's fair. I get that. 3D printers are great, but uh, they're not creating individual links quite yet. Although that would be a fun project, I must say. I don't know if my printer, oop, I don't know if my printer would be able to handle that. Maybe with the right supports, it's hard to say. I have printed like um, chain trees, so like I've pre-sprued a bunch of things already, but. Um, That's not quite the same thing, obviously. Um, hmm. Not a huge fan of how this, uh, this one axis keeps staying the same, but it rotates all the other axes. <laughs> I'm sure there's some obscure setting I could go into to fix that, but at the most right now, the only thing I have is this kind of custom dumbed down UI, which eh, I don't, uh, don't regret it. When I first opened this program and it was just, you know, endless menus of things all over the place, it was very intimidating because I'm not used to seeing that. In Rhino? Maybe, um, but I don't have, I have Rhino, but I don't have the uh, knowledge to use it quite yet. Again, on my list of things to do. I'd like to get into the habit of doing like a daily sculpt or something where I can, um, you know, just you know, pull some random thing out of a hat and like sculpt it in ZBrush and see where it goes. Because I, I just, I know that this is a program that I need to learn. But I don't know. There's only so many hours in a day, you know, that type of argument. Oh, come on, go where I want you to go. There we are. I have yet to even uh, map like all the keys on my, I'm just using like a Huion 
tablet here. I'm not doing anything fancy. I wanted something cheap-ish where, you know, if I break it or if I just don't decide to continue doing this, that it's not a tragic loss of funds or something like that. Um, or if it doesn't see as much use is, is very plausible at this stage. It's not the end of the world, but you know, ultimately if, if my partner was more into doing digital art, I think we probably would have had a big fancy drawn screen Cintiq sort of thing already. But she likes her pencil crayons. So. Speaking of, if you're interested in commissioning an artist to do a drawing, she's available at the moment. And she just started her Fiverr, so if you're interested. Um, all right, I think that's all right. Let's try a different shape now, just to spice things up a bit. Uh, append a ring. Where's the ring? The one thing I do like about ZBrush, though, is this in move just the way you can modify these meshes so simply like if this was in a CAD you don't have that option at all or I don't know how to do that option anywhere in CAD uh, what does this need I think that's better. All right, so before we go into any more detail there, I'm actually gonna to start to use ZBrush. Oops, keep hitting my mic, jeez. I'm gonna actually use ZBrush for its purpose here. Now let's go down to geometry. Let's divide this twice so that we get a finer mesh. As you can see, one, two. So that's the original, divide one, two. That splits all these polygons into halves basically it's dividing it making them geometry twice and I'm doing that under Z remesher I believe or whatever this is no oh no sorry Z remesher is when I want to decimate kind of like I want to go back and do everything I'll do that again later that's something that I've also learned is that Dynamesh is not as useful as I keep hearing like everyone says oh we use Dynamesh it's great but like I don't know, I'd rather use the way I was shown, which again, very limited knowledge, um, is, you know, why don't I just look at the individual thing, handle the, the mesh there, because you can see down here in my mesh count, I've got 39,000 polygons, and it looks like 32,000 of those are active, which is in this thing I'm looking at right now. Um, and then there's only like a very few in that one, I believe this. So, you know, like why work with a million at a time when you don't need to? Anyway, let's go into, let's try move topology. I feel like I might, yeah, this is what I need. I was gonna say, maybe I can go to clay and build up a spot here, but I think this will do. I wanna make this chain kind of more like, you know, sauron -y in a way. So I'm gonna add spikes on the sides if I can find the right side I guess I want that polygon right there I'll pull that out. oh come on maybe we will just do clay clay Okay, that didn't work. Um, I think I forgot to turn on a setting. Uh, back face mask. Yeah, there we go. So now it's not affecting the back here. Uh, and let's turn the draw size down because I don't want to go too big in that one spot. And we will 
of course refine this as we go. Oops. There we go. It's not bad. And then if we wanted to define this a little bit, well, that's a bit much. Let's adjust the Z intensity. Again, I know this is levels of detail that are unnecessary for this particular thing, but I'm learning, so bear in mind. I just want to get a good handle on how this application works before I get into anything else. That's not what I wanted. It's a little lumpy, but I mean, if it was forged, even, yeah, I, I have blacksmithing experience, so I used to teach it, and I don't even know how I'd make one of these chains, so I guess lumpy isn't the worst thing, but I will make it a little sharper. One of the running jokes that we had in the shop I used to work at, the blacksmith shop, was, uh, what was it? Sorry, um, one of these things that were one of the running jokes that we had at that blacksmith shop was that all the, well, I'm not going to say kids because you know they came in at all ages, but a lot of the students had experience with their coal forges, uh, break drum forges, and things like that, learning from forged and fire and what they did, and ah, uh, that spike's not even in the center. Anyway, uh, they had all these ex this experience that they thought they had from watching things online. And I'm not trying to say it's not a way to go, but definitely don't abandon the class and think that you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> it looks so bad. <laughs> Uh, I love the smooth tool. That's my like, my saving grace. It just fixes everything. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Go back to the standard. I think this drawing size could be smaller. There we go. I feel like I lost... Like I lost some density there somehow, but back and forth. Back and forth, always. I mean, it's just like real life, really, except this is the tool. It's, it's you know, like clay. So for that reason alone, I do enjoy ZBrush, in a sense, just digital clay. All right, so is that any better? Am I in the middle? Oh, kind of. Maybe we can do better on the other side. This will be our learning curve here. Uh, so what do we do? We use clay, right? Clay, you know what? I actually want to put that brush like right here. I don't know how to modify my UI. I'm so new. Okay, let's say this is the center. I'm gonna say right here. Yeah, that's better, okay. So 
So clay is just like adding material onto the, the mesh, not moving the mesh itself. Now, I mean, the mesh is being dynamic and it's adjusting, but it's not pulling. Like move topology is what you'd use if you wanted to pull out like a spike. And you know, there's no reason why I couldn't do that, but you can see it's not exactly accurate. With clay though, it's a little bit more. Mm, it's more fluid in a way. I don't know how to describe it. It just tends to work a little bit easier. And you put it on in strips. It's like adding, what's the word? It's like, um, it's like layers of pressure, I guess, you know, like you're putting on layers of pencil or something to make it darker. Well, this isn't making it darker. It's making it bigger. So kind of cool. I don't remember how big we went with this. I guess I can a little bit more. We'll go in smooth. There we go. It's not bad. <laughs> you can definitely see it's not quite centered, but whatever. And we'll go back to the damn standard. I like the damn standard brush because it makes uh, this nice crease. It's generally like a finishing brush, but I quite like it just for going back into finding areas that might disappear with the smooth tool you know like this is smooth tool and it like it just undid everything that I just put in with the crease so it's nice to go in and define things oops the thing I don't necessarily like about the crease is that if you're not in the cr that crease every single time it's uh gets a little messy like sketchy see it just kind of makes pock marks you could use that to your advantage like I guess if you were doing steel, um, like a steel texture, like the pitting that you can get, that would be pretty simple. It just kind of doodle all over it. But I found a better way to do that texture. I think it was um, clay. Uh, actually, yeah, let me just test that here. Just do a little thing. Uh, I think I did, oh, there we go, clay. Then I changed the stroke to spray. And instead of Z add, meaning that it's building up material. I went Z sub, lowered the Z intensity, which is how deep it goes, and made this generally pretty big. Oops, maybe it was small, I don't remember. Yeah, there we go. So now it's kind of leaving like random marks, like forge marks, I guess you could say. Yeah, so the, you gotta go pretty small, especially on this chain link but and if we turn off the the poly what do they call this line fill so this is if we wanted to see where the lines are which as you can see i've been using as like reference points but as soon as you want to see what the texture looks like definitely best to take that off so you can actually see and sometimes even the color would be better something else i don't know i'm going to leave it matte cap gray because that's pretty standard but yeah, you can see we can get some decent texture in there. And I'm going to do all this on this uh, on this one chain link, because then I can go in, duplicate, we can rotate them, and we can build up something a little bit different. But I only have to do this job once, which is important. Because why would I want to do all of this over again, unless it was like being scrutinized from every detail by like a cinema grade panel of judges or something, you know. There we go. So I guess if you were to go in, I don't know how to do, um, what's the word? I don't know how to do poly paint, which is like adding color to this stuff yet. Um, but if you were going to do that, I would make these look rusty. 
I've seen a lot of rusted chain and depending on what kind of environment it's been in like if it's been around salt water this deep pitting is very typical of that put a little bit around there but we'll leave the tip generally a little sharper and then we'll go back to what we were doing before <laughs> I definitely get off track. Let's make that size a little bigger. Make it a little smaller. There we go. Not bad. Let's add that. Uh, let's do that clay texturing trick again. Oops. There we go. That's good enough. From a distance, that looks pretty good, I think. I'm going to leave the inside. Oh, maybe I'll do a little bit more down here. I was going to say, I'll leave the inside generally smooth because if you think about what chain does you know it's linked with another link and it moves there's likelihood that that'll smooth it out you know with use so it would make sense to leave the inside a little smoother and honestly no one's going to see this anyway there we go so there's a chain link now let's turn off that. Go back to sub tools. Duplicate. And we'll make this. Get rid of draw. And now we're just working with this again. Pivot 90 ish. I'm going to set the chain up in such a way it's kind of snaky. So it's not, um, it's not all the same boring thing, you know. Um, yeah. Pivot that one. What do you want? Oh. <laughs> uh, and then I think we'll do duplicate that again oh wait that one there we go I'll duplicate that one again and I think I'm just gonna hide this inside the ball pivot that and bring that uh, oh. you know what actually yeah I'm gonna leave it like this and I'll just go over the ball and I'll kind of draw the ball up around this bit of the chain that I'm not a huge fan of. It seems a little, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not cheating. It's just lazy, I guess. <laughs> uh, that's good enough. I, I think that might just be, that might be clipping a little bit inside, but who cares? It's, uh, where's that? There we go. What I meant by clipping was right in here. Zoom. It's right in there. This is kind of what I was talking about with the 3D printing and stuff. Like we can't print individual chain links so that they'll move. Um, or at least I don't know how to do that. I think you could if you had the right supports, but it's not something I'm willing to try. But clipping, like, as in this mesh is inside another mesh. Now, if you were to do this for, like, you know, video game art, you would probably want to do it this way, where you can see 
uh, you know, gaps in between the chain links. But if you were to do this for miniatures, you would want to make this all like really clunky. In other words, make these like twice as big and just stick them all together so that it was just a chain like shape. Because when it's printed, obviously, you can't tell the difference. And um, if you don't, it probably just won't print. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll just do. I know these aren't gonna all be 90 degrees. I think I'm gonna go back and adjust them. You know, like chain links kind of, you know, they fall onto each other a little bit like that. So we'll go back and adjust that in a little bit. But if I can just set up the, the general serpentine look for now, I think I'll be happy with that. Uh, that's all right. And how many links should we do? I wonder, like. There is a, sorry, I uh, don't know how to say that name, probably Ty something. Uh, 3D printer that prints chains? I'm sure there is. I, I just don't know how to do it, so. Um, like I mentioned before, I have printed, uh, you know, like full trees where I've had the chain links individually put up there. Actually, I have it over here, I can show you. Two examples. Not sure how well you can see that, it's so small, but uh, maybe I'll post a picture later. But it's like all the different individual chain links. So rather than printing them individually and then sticking them on you know, the central sprue tree, uh, just do it all at once. There's another one, support material intact. Um, and I found that was really good because these links are 10 millimeters long, three millimeters wide-ish, you know, these, rod shaped ones and having to print every single one and then f just finicky put one on there I don't know I didn't want to deal with that uh, and it just seemed like a better use of time even if it does take longer to print it probably wouldn't take me much shorter a time to assemble them by hand and then by hand there's still you know the whole human error factor uh, there we go Which one was it? No. Oh, there it is. Duplicate. Oh no. There we go. Move. I saw a really interesting one actually. Um, this is a post on one of the Facebook groups and the guy was, he would make a chain and then what he would do is run it through, I think it was Blender. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Blender that has the right simulation thing. It might have been Fusion 360, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so he would put all these chains together and then do a, a simulation of how they bent so like, is it so tight that it just stays completely straight? It's hard to say until you make it or run a simulation. And uh, I thought that was like really cool because I have bought and I have printed and made and you know all the everything about chains. 
before and uh and then you can't put it together because it's so tight or it just didn't work out as planned so um you know i've got a bunch of printed chain links that after casting were just kind of useless i mean you had to bend them all the way over when it wasn't good even printing them pre set up was Uh, even even printing them pre-linked was a little bit silly. So mm. all right, I think that's good enough uh, for that one. I'm going to do. I think I'll have to make one extra link, and that'll be the link that goes on the actual handle itself. But that's fine. That's that's something. Sorry, I'm just looking at the stream here on my end, and it's not as clean as I wanted it to be. I apologize for that. I'll downgrade the quality next time, but for now, we'll just have to bear with the kind of stutteriness of ZBrush. Um, on my end, it's nice and smooth, but naturally, you know, streaming it doesn't always end up that way um, I'm right now sorry getting back to the project right now I'm debating whether or not I should add more spikes putting more up here I'm just not sure so which one is this I don't know I want to see that one two three four um, hmm, maybe if I just combine these four and then duplicated them, flipped them, put them on the top. That would save a bunch of time. I think I'll, I'll try it. I'm not sure if it'll work. Uh, what do we want to do here? Merge down. Yes. Okay, so that's two. That's this one and that one. This one, yep. Merge down. Yep. So now it's those two. Okay, cool. So let's merge those down together. Yep. Uh, and then we'll duplicate. Uh oh. Oh, okay, cool. I thought it would uh, reset. Uh, we're just going to have to play with it. Frank. I guess it kind of beats. Oh, wrong one. I meant for the blue. I guess it kind of beats putting them individually if you don't want to. You know. Uh, what the heck? Why can't I go down? more or less what I wanted. I think I've got to lower it on this side. And I got to raise it on that side. Oh, you know what, actually, I should probably just tilt the whole thing because I realized these spikes should be over diagonally there we go there we go that's better uh, I really wish there was a way I don't know how to do this I don't know how to reset this like I want to make it everything square again but I don't know how. And that would be the advantage to um, placing everything individually, I suppose. You know what? Good enough. Good enough. That's 
all we're going to do for that. <laughs> One of the excuses we always had was like, oh, it's going to be orcish. We're going to make it an orcish dagger. It looks like crap. It's just a hammered. Uh, yeah, this is going to be orcish mace. Yeah, these ones don't line up in any which way, shape, or form, but whatever. I don't know what that button does that I just clicked. Probably just self-destruct everything. Um, so now I'm going to merge all of these down. There we go. So now we have the ball, just the ball. And we'll click on that. And then we got the ball and the bunch of chains. Okay, so now let's go back to geometry. Divide that a couple of times. And now we're working in the couple million polygon range. Lovely. And that's where Z remesher comes in because I can go back and kind of, it's not decimating, it's, it's definitely lowering the poly count and you can always up it. It's just kind of making everything the same again, which really helps for models when you get like, um, well, this is a bad example now because it's all uniform, but when you bring in a model that's got, you know, a big flat top on it and then like a billion little polygons around the side, it just doesn't, it doesn't all add up. Anyway, um, move, oops. I think what I'm going to do now is just like battle damage. That's what this needs. I'm actually going to drop this because that's more likely to have been worn away by the chain. Something else she warned me about with, with ZBrush specifically was um, save a lot. Save a lot. But I am going to not use that advice because I'm in the middle of a stream and I'm just doing a practice piece. So normally, yeah, I would be saving. Whoops, too big. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I think maybe I should divide this again, though. Yeah, okay. So down here, poly count total 1.5 million, 500,000 on just the ball. I think I tested my computer and it was around the 2.5 two mark is when it starts to really like show that it's having trouble. So I think we're okay for now. I do have a little CPU monitor thing up here and it's like pinned. sure if that's what I want. I just want to fill in that little crease. It's not really doing what I want it to do. Eh, whatever it is. Didn't see it. <clears throat> Clay. You know what I think it is actually? Looking at how this crease is handling compared to that crease, I think this particular cone wasn't quite inset into the ball. And that's why it's making a bit of an issue here. 
because this one similar crease but it's handling it differently so I think that's what's going on oh no wait hold on yeah I can actually see like the bottom of the the rim of the cone weird I guess it's kind of like saving the fact that it was objects it hasn't quite meshed them together whatever Switch this to an additive. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Maybe we can go back over it a little bit. Draw side, add some texture. Same brush, just making it so that it's adding rather than subtracting. Give it some lumpiness, I guess. Subtract, draw size. I think one of the first jewelry projects that I want to do, uh, I want to make um, a snake, but like, you know, it'll be a realistic snake and I want it to be a gauged earring. So you put the tail through your ear and let it drop down and it just kind of weighs itself. I think that'd be kind of eh, a little bit corny, but also cool. I don't see them, I don't see that very much. And I think a snake is probably one of the simpler things. It's not quite in the way I'm doing it now where I've got uh, you know, I'm working with primitives and stuff like that. I'll have to figure out how to manip manipulate like a tube into to the shapes I want. But yeah, that's a project I want. And then I want to do like the scale pattern <clears throat> on the snake. Uh, and I want to have it all in inset, so negatively set, so that uh, if you're putting it through your ear, if it was positive, you'd have bumps that are going to rub against your lobe. But if you have it inset, it's not as much. Like it'll be, you know what I mean? It's just not, it's not gonna grab. It'll still have some texture, but the texture can be significantly less uh, in depth and still show what exactly it is. Maybe I can do like different species of snake. Snake people are generally pretty into their animals, so like you can do a boa constrictor, maybe we can do a rattlesnake, cobra would be cool with the with the hood open or something. Not to get too specific. Eh, all right, so I think that's enough texture. Get bored with that. So much texture. <laughs> all right, there we go. I think that's actually all of it, finally. And then I think a little point of detail that won't take any time, I'm going to blunt some of these spikes and deform them a little bit because, I mean, anything that's got this kind of texture is probably iron. Oh, that didn't work. Go away, cone. There we go. Uh, it's probably iron, so it's soft. So if you hit something else hard, like armor, it'll probably bend. It'll also add to that um, orcish look that I detest so much. Oh, there we go. We'll just use the smooth tool and we'll push that little nub. There we go. 
That's not what I wanted to do, but whatever. All right, I think that's not too bad probably just focus on these big ones actually because they're the prime striking position ones there we go should probably go to the right too I notice I've been going all to the left but then again yeah, I don't know if you were swinging it, you'd probably only swing it one direction in theory, or at least that's what you'd try to do. Anyway, good enough. Again, getting into too much detail for a practice piece. There we go. All right, so let's do the handle next. So I'll get rid of the geometry tab. Um, subtool, append, um, we'll add a cylinder. There we go. Cylinder, move up. And we want to make this smaller but longer. There we go. I think we'll make that, there we go, a little bit more natural. And then I'll put a, another ring on the top here. Uh, maybe I'll make it just a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's better. Not bad, okay. Uh, and then we'll append again, and we'll add another ring. Because this one's gonna have to look a little bit different. center that if I was going to do this it wouldn't like in reality uh, if I was going to do this I wouldn't make it a ring at all I'd make it a u-shape and I'd attach it onto the handle and uh, I would rivet it on if I couldn't make it even better like stronger it doesn't look terrible though I can put in like a couple little details here that'll show like pins going through make them like rivet heads yeah I like that And then we'll go in and do some handle detail, but I'm going to make that uh, merge. Oh, there we go. Merge down. Yep. Cool. And now we can move the whole thing where I want it inside the chain. There we are. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, so I think I'll go back and we'll add some texture into this new chain link. might be a bit large actually oh 
Right, we should remesh that. Uh, Subtool, geometry, divide, divide. There we go. Oh, that's actually what I want it to happen. Um, but I think there's something about creaser. Oh, what was it? There was something. Oh, it's in Z Modeler or something like that. You can go back in. I'm not gonna do it. I don't. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> How do I get out of Z Modeler? Crap. Ah, good enough. Um, draw, move. No, I don't think I want C modeler. Good enough. Sorry. Oh, I got sidetracked. Um, anyway, Z modeler, you can go in and you can make it so that that doesn't happen. But I actually do want it to happen, so it's not a big deal. There we go. Okay, now we're out of Z, Z modeler. There we go. That's still a bit big. There we go. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Again, we'll leave the inside of that chain link because it would certainly be worn. Well, not always certainly, but it would have the highest chance of being worn smooth from use. There we go. And then I said we were going to add, oops, there we go. I was going to add some little rivets here. So maybe we'll reset this clay brush. Add, there we go. And then I'll go back in with the standard. And we'll go around them. Damn standard. There we go. Nice and defined. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing. I actually find the the most hard thing about doing uh, CAD stuff, or I guess this isn't CAD, um, 3D modeling in general is the terms that go between each each program so like if I wanted to do I use a lot of my iPad um, the iPad has a uh, I have shaper shaper 3d on there if you haven't tried it definitely try it not sponsored or anything just it's free to use if you have an iPad Pro and a pencil like it cannot hurt it's very intuitive. I like it for building most of my jewelry models, which then I can bring into ZBrush, and um, we can do, you know, add texture or anything, really. And uh, it's just really intuitive. I like it. I forgot what I was saying. Um, sorry, yeah, the terms. So if there's like, you know, in, in Shaper, we can do Union or or loft or things like that but in Rhino they mean entirely separate things in, in Fusion 360 they mean something else entirely so you know learning the terms is what really bugs me I wish that the companies would just kind of agree on uh, a unified terminology to use you know eh. sorry I'm trying to smooth that out and it's just not doing it I think that's part of the what is that weird like aberration oh well, I'm not gonna worry about that too much but anyway there we go so we've added some rivets they're honestly a little bit tall and they're not straight maybe they're nails they're nails that's what they are their nails and they're holding that chain link on to the handle itself there we go now I have no idea what to do for this um, I do have an idea uh, I, uh, hmm. I guess I could take the standard and we could go over this whole thing and try to push in like uh, what do you do 
try to push in like a handle but I don't feel that confident with that um, sorry Sandman 5000 do you make jewelry with your models yes I do mostly um, now obviously I'm, I'm learning ZBrush and this is not a jewelry thing at all um, but yeah for the most part I do make jewelry so I don't have anything on hand they're all behind me or in boxes or whatever or sold um, yeah I do make a fair amount of jewelry uh, then we'll 3D print it in, uh, we use Bluecast X10, um, CR3A, we have the Prusa Green stuff, had bad experience with that though. Uh, so yeah, we cast it in like a, a castable material, or we'll print it in castable material. Cast it, we have our own casting setup and stuff like that, so we can create pretty much anything we want. Um, at the moment we're kind of slowing down or we've slowed down quite a bit not only because of well thanks covid for you know slowing everything down um oh no what did i just do there we go okay uh also our casting setup is not ideal uh so we have to we're kind of at the mercy of the weather um we have like an uninsulated shed that uh, does not really help. You know what? Sorry, off track, what I was saying. I'm gonna do like a wood grain. That's what we'll do. You want me to bend it a little bit? Yeah, I could do that. Um, I think I'm gonna add like a little collar down here we'll use we'll make another ring maybe we'll add some more studs to it or something and then we'll we'll call this model done again just practicing I'm not trying to go super crazy with this but let's do a wood grain pattern on here or something that would pass for wood grain Oops. Maybe I should make this just a little bit deeper. Yeah, I think that's better. If anyone has any, uh, what's the word, uh, recommendations for, <clears throat> sorry, uh, learning how to do more ZBrush stuff. I'm all ears about like courses or whatever because I, I have a good handle on what's happening right now in front of me but I wouldn't say I'm overly confident. Um, like that suggestion to uh, you know bend this, I don't really know how to do that honestly. <laughs> Um, I mean, if it's just like move topology, okay, that's different, but as soon as you get into, you know, like trying to treat this like a branch, it's a little hard. Cast, learning ZBrush, you want to collaborate? Yeah, cool. Um, send me a message, Sandman, if you want. I'm, I'm all ears to hear what you have to say. Uh, I do definitely more of the casting side. If you have more ZBrush experience, I'm totally game to, to work with you. Um, I do lots of client work as well like aside from trying to make my own work so I'm not unfamiliar with you know printing someone else's project and then casting in whatever metal and uh, we also have molding facilities so we can create rubber molds keep costs down speed things up a little bit um, yeah so we're, we're also considering some other things um, the move brush, mask the chain, bowl, bend, okay. Let's see what we can do. Um, move. Move. Okay. I don't use move too much, obviously. Oh, this is kind of like move topology. But you say mask. Mask the bowl, bend, okay. Um, let me finish. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me finish the texture and then I'll go to the move. Oh no, I made this brush size too big. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, I was on a tangent there. Um, I was talking about one of the things we want to do next. Um, one of the skills that I'm the least proficient at, which is kind of ironic for a jeweler, is stone setting. So I'm not comfortable setting, you know, big honking gems or anything like that. Like, I can do bezel setting very comfortably, but when it comes to prongs, pave, forget it. Like, I can't. I, I have no idea. So I'm thinking I might make some um, practice pieces. So like, you know, pre-cut some of the pave settings, um, things like that. And we'll offer those for sale. I'll also cast them for myself so I can actually get a handle on setting properly. Um, I just find that I don't have the time, I don't have the money to be making settings for stones and then just tossing it essentially like I just don't have the time for that so um, yeah making some I think would be kinda useful uh, maybe we'll offer them for sale I'm thinking I might start casting them in bronze just so that they're a, a, a much lower um, cost like just to, to buy so maybe we can sell them in sets of three, you know, the same style, but different stone setting or stone sizes, um, things like that. And then maybe we can go on to silver because the argument I have heard and I agree with is that if we make these in silver, we can recycle the silver like for casting, or you can just at least set it, send it to a refinery, get some money back for it. Whereas bronze, it's like it's served its purpose. It's done. It's not even worth really exploring or, or, or rather refining sorry I mask the chain add some stripes like a katana control oh, okay um, let's try this move thing mm. move there we go um, so I'm not going to mask the chain just because I'm working in subtools so I don't have to the, the chains are all on their own, you know, layer, quote unquote. So right now I'm only working on the handle. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. This is like move topology, but way better. This is exactly what I wanted. Thank you very much, Jeremy DeMarco. Yeah, I do follow you on Instagram. I do have, I do see your work and you're doing great things. You do like a daily, a daily Z rush sculpt, I see. Yeah, that's cool. A bit more like a branch, I guess. So yeah, that's uh, gonna be my little thing today. I won't take up any more of your time. I think that turned out great, honestly. Like the texture, not bad. Not bad. Um, and then I think if I wanted to like merge all this together, maybe Z remesh it, and then. Uh, just to bring everything back, because we're working at about one and, a, one and a half million right now. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. So yeah, anyway, thanks for hearing my rant. Um, Sandman5000Dream, if you want to message me, um, go to clearmindcasting.ca. We, You can just send me an email. Um, more than happy to collaborate with you, hear what you got to say. And uh, we'll see, see how things go. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching the stream. I will definitely be doing more of this. I enjoyed this. Uh, I'm gonna have to come up with more projects to make. Um, I was thinking of just like randomly generating stuff. I don't know. Like maybe next time we'll do a cheeseburger or something. I don't know. I'm gonna come up with something that I can do a bit more with primitives and then work up from there, so. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next stream.